Good day and welcome to yet another exciting episode of In Conversation. My name is Bongani Imnube, and today in studio, I'm joined by one of the most illustrious and inspirational academics and leaders. I'm talking about Professor Debuho Mashifana, the head of the Department of Chemical Engineering Technology in the Faculty of Engineering and built environment. She also um, featured among the male and guardian 200 young South Africans. Well, Prof. Mashifana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mangani. It is really an honor to be here uh, this morning. I recently learned that you were a doctor just earlier this year, actually. So I'm, I'm very fascinated by the transition to being a professor now. How does that feel for you? Um... Obviously, it is a great, it's a great thing. It is a great feeling, um, but it is more than a feeling for me. It is really about the opportunities, uh, numerous opportunities that have been presented to me and afforded to me, mainly to serve, to serve humanity uh, in so many ways, to serve in the roles um, where God has planted me and the responsibility that he has entrusted me with. So it is uh, more than a feeling. Uh, it's more than a feeling. Um, what really gives me that greater feeling is the impact that I'm able to make when I'm really carrying out my task and serving where I have been entrust, planted yes. to serve. Interesting. And how would you describe that journey to being finally a professor? Because I know already the doctorate and being a doctor is, is a long journey on its own. It's a milestone. And to having reached the, the, being a professor, how has that journey been for you? It has been a, a challenging journey, I should be honest. It has been a challenging journey, but also uh, a, a fulfilling one. A fulfilling in a manner that um, I, I'm talking about opportunities that uh, I think once you get your your, your doctoral degree, in fact, that's when the journey begins. <laughs> we thought we had started. <laughs> Seemingly, we still need to go. Yes. <laughs> so that is really where the journey begins because, uh, I mean, for one to be an associate professor is everything that we are, you have been doing after your PhD. So I've obtained my PhD in 20, uh, 2017. So it means that, I mean, everything prior there does not really count it, you know. So it means that after that PhD, you literally have to start building that first, uh, putting that first, first brick to build a house. And it is that journey that really takes you to being uh, or becoming uh, the associate professor or even a, a full professor. So it is a journey that it is uh, challenging and exciting in, in, in so many ways because it's when really you are offered opportunities to show up in so many areas and wearing different caps, especially me. Um, I'm a researcher within the Department of Chemical Engineering. Um, I'm now also serving as the head of department. And um, with all of that, I have the opportunity to supervise our students, you know, um, and uh, really instill, share knowledge, um, build human capacity and share skills, really build skills uh, for the generation that is coming after me so all of that and i think the one that is so close to my heart is community engagement uh, activities yes. so all of that so i mean within the academic um academic space or sector for one to to move from one level to 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 another i mean that is really your all levels i'm talking a senior lecturer to ap a lecturer to a senior lecturer there are key areas that one needs to be focusing on which is, I mean, you need to be a teacher. You need to be an excellent teacher. We're talking about uh, excellence in teaching and learning, talking about uh, uh, innovative research. You're talking about uh, community engagement. And really, some of these are some of the strategic objectives uh, of the university. So you need to be really be found participating in all of this and excelling in those. So it, it is, uh, I think it's in, uh, exciting in that way because it does provide that opportunity for one to serve uh, and really be available to, to make an impact in in, in other people's lives. Yes, and you indeed have been lifting as you rise. Well, that's your motto. Yes. Can you tell us about that motto? Because yes. it's evident. <laughs> I can see it on my own. That wow, you've been lifting as yes. you rise, literally. For me, it has really been um, growing up. Let me start there. Growing up from uh, the, the family that I was raised in, my father is a pastor. My mother, Umamufundesi, <laughs> pastor's wife. So. Um, 
serving, I've actually seen serving from home. As a young age, that is where I've seen my parents serve humanity in so many ways. And uh, that is what I've taken with me uh, growing up. I don't, I, 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 sometimes I say that I was born with it because every single time I, I see a need to serve. And um, for me, serving really, if I say lifting is a rise, it, it's, it's in really in many forms. It is in many forms that I serve with my mouth. I serve with my mouth way. I think, I believe this year, I've been doing that a lot, where I've been invited to speak in different platforms, where I've, I've been engaging with um, uh, different communities. And I'm talking about uh, learners. I've, I've engaged with primary school learners. I've engaged with um, uh, uh, corporates, uh, people in, in, in the corporate space. So I've been really using my voice as a tool to serve, uh, to impact, uh, to inspire. And I really believe that uh, for me, that motto, lifting is a rise. Um, I be strongly, strongly believe that each and every one of us has a responsibility, that if I've really gone a step ahead, I have a responsibility to look back, to say that um, the people that are coming after me, how do I ensure that they do not really experience some of the challenges that I've experienced? So for me, it is all about that to say that my journey was never easy at all. Uh, I probably need another episode for that. It has not been easy, but I've taken it upon myself, especially in the STEMI-related uh, field. Um, I've seen it that uh, so many women are struggling. And those are the struggles, are not new struggles, they're the struggles that I've personally uh, experienced and I've taken it upon myself to say that if I have gone through it uh, and I'm on the other side and the women that are coming uh, into contact with me, the women that I get to interact with, I will make sure, it does not matter what happens, I will make sure. And there are instances where I literally say that I'm going to take a bullet for you, literally there, to say that I'm going to take a bullet for the women that are coming after me, at least uh, because I have a child. <laughs> I think that is that I have a girl child and there are things that are happening where I will say that, but this cannot continue to happen while I close my mouth. Because if I close my mouth, there's a girl child that is coming after me. In 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time, she may be facing the same thing. So it's really, it's deeper. It's deep, especially if you now become a parent, you have a child, a girl child, uh, and you understand the dynamics uh, of women in STEM. You begin to really, I think the decisions that you make and the struggles and uh, the battles that you get to get be involved in and really uh, fight for other women that are coming after you, it's something that becomes uh, more like natural. Mm. Yeah. And, well, your voice is actually coming out, um, taking it to your article that you, you, you have released, yeah. um, which is titled Empower Women in STEMI to Unleash the Potential for a Brighter South Africa. I think that is where it actually all begins. And just to get the viewers also up to the conversation, so STEMI, if you like myself, you did not know, STEMI stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, and Innovation. Innovation, right? Yes. So in your article, you speak about empowering empowering women to unleash uh, a potential for a brighter South Africa. Mm. So could you elaborate why is this gap still existing despite uh, efforts mm. that have been taken yeah. to promote gender equity in South Africa? Yeah. Uh, as you have uh, correctly alluded to that, yeah. Um, and the issues of uh, gender gap in STEM fields yes. still still exist, and it is not uh, a South African problem; is a is a global problem. In fact, um, it is reported that only thirteen percent of women choose to study uh, STEM related fields in South Africa. And globally, that number is at 30%. So that alone really just shows that gap. 13 South Africa and 30% globally. You can really um, begin to look at it uh, from that. And not only that, um, it is also uh, worth noting that um, issues um, of uh, gender gap in STEM fields, they really have their roots in uh, historical biases. They have um, uh, their roots in... Um, I mean, uh, so how, well, how the society, the expectations from our societies, and uh, such things are really what uh, create the barriers for, for women to excel or even choose a careers in STEM fields. Um, so, uh, so uh, 
things exist because we still have uh, a lack, lack of women that um, are raising their hands to say that I am willing to serve, I'm willing to mentor the generation that is coming after me, I'm willing to mentor even the women that are in my space. And it's not something that is really starting when uh, one is in the workspace, a workplace. It's something that is starting early on in, in I'll, I'll begin with the household, in our household where really our societies uh, are telling us, societies, uh, there's a norm, biases that, I mean, a girl child must play with it all. A girl child must cook in the kitchen. <laughs> a girl child cannot play with a car, cannot be a mechanic and so forth. And we have, we're still experiencing in many parts of South Africa where a girl child will be the one that is still going to go to the world to get water, to come and prepare food for the family while a boy child is uh, somewhere are busy with their homework, you know. So we're still living in a society where even uh, primary school learners, high school learners, girls are still told that they cannot do mathematics, they cannot do physical sciences because they are not good enough for such. And so, so that is our realities. Uh, there's really a, a need for that. We still have lack of, um, uh, as I said, that uh, role models. We, uh, Someone, a girl child, does not see anyone that looks like them. I can't even recall uh, reading a book, uh, say, primary school, or even now, what the, the, the learners are being exposed to. I can't remember a book where, I mean, um, it, there's this projection of um, role models, which are women, engineers, scientists that are really doing great. And so it, it, those are some of the things that um, really make this gap to, to continue to, to really uh, widen. And we're really taking some time to, to narrow that gap. So uh, the, the society, uh, their expectations and all these biases to say that, no, 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 because you are a woman, you cannot do one to three. And yeah, it, it is a long way, but those are really some, I think that is really where it, it stems from. Yeah. And as, as you have identified that, it is important to narrow this gap. Yeah. And given that um, STEM, STEM fields um, are a catalyst to economic growth, and how would women participation in, in these fields benefit both the individuals and the South African economy as a whole? Um, okay, if, if we starting with uh, where we are in South Africa, so South Africa has a population of about, what, uh, 61 million, 300,000. And um, in that population, around 50.5%, 51% is women. Um, uh, some of the recent uh, statistics um, are showing that about 42%, 42.6% of the household are actually uh, led by women in South Africa. So, uh, and I'm looking at it from there that we have a population that, I mean, close, more than 50% of the population in South Africa are women. And if we really, we are not exposing women to STEM-related fields, whereby um, through the STEM-related fields, we begin to learn about uh, critical thinking, solving some of the problems, becoming innovative. And I mean, we're talking about, we are in the era of what, fourth industrial revolution, fifth industrial revolution, uh, uh, you know? So I really believe that a workforce that is diverse, uh, uh, I mean, uh, women will most definitely will bring a different perspective. Uh, we're talking about uh, this gap and we're really calling for organizations, institutions to transform. And how will institutions transform if there is no voice of a woman? So you cannot create an environment for me as, a, as, a, as an institution without hearing from me as a woman. But women are not even given opportunities to enter in some of these spaces. Women are not are given opportunities to, to actually make decisions. So we have people that are making decisions for women without really understanding that what do I need as a woman? So I really believe that um, uh, in including women um, in the economy or really empowering women will that uh, really it direct or indirectly empower empower economy and uh, really STEM related fields as an individual, it, is, it begins with empowering yourself. Begins with empowering yourself with the, the skills that are related to where we are, what is required in the world that we are living in. 
And I mean, w once you, you, you get to that, you now ac uh, acquire the skills, acquire the knowledge to solve the problem, and then you begin to add value into our community. I'm talking about more than 50% of uh, the population that um, is uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, f a female gender or female gender population. Those are the people that, uh, if you have for two, for the two percent that is heading households in South Africa, those are the people that understand the real problems on the ground. They are not excluded in STEM-related fields. They can actually come up with applicable solutions to the problems that the, our nation is uh, is experiencing. So it really, uh, really bring that um, uh, uh, inclusivity to start with, whereby now different perspectives are really beginning to be laid on the table to say that there's actually another perspective. Yes, you may be doing, uh, you might have been doing things this way for the longest time, but there, there, there's another voice which matters. And I think the other important thing, um, recently I've actually had uh, a wise man saying that one of the mistakes that the women tend to do when they are given opportunities to lead, they want to lead like men. Then he said that you do not have to lead like a man. There's a reason why you are a woman. Lead like a woman. Women, I mean, we lead with with with, with a compassion. We have we, we are empathetic and, and all of that, and that is our strength. So uh, I really, I don't believe that if if in any, any organization that uh, is not inclusive, it, it doesn't is not diverse. I mean, they're missing out in, in in so many things. We lead with like I'm saying that we we really we we bring our hearts uh, to everything that we do. We are we are we, we are people. Women are people that they are really there to serve. They are there for the impact, you know. And um, so imagine you're leading there. It is about numbers and it's just numbers, targets, and then all that. So that is what we we really, that is that inclusivity that there, there are so many angles that uh, without a woman in that, I mean, I think that the transformation will not be a full cycle transformation within our organizations and institutions. True indeed. And well, I hear that organizations, your educational institutions and employers play an important role towards an inclusive and diverse um, environment, especially in STEM related fields. What would you say are some of the practices or initiatives that um, they can actually implement? Of course, if they are also successful ones, we can note and some that they can actually do to help towards uh, an inclusive and diverse uh, work workspace. Yeah, let me start with uh, with uh, the initi some of the initi initiatives that are working. And here at the University of Johannesburg, uh, so I was uh, really fortunate uh, that a few years ago I was uh, part of the program called uh, UJ Women in Leadership Program. Um, uh, within the University of Johannesburg, uh, there's also a research leadership program specifically designed for women that are um, uh, emerging researchers, uh, women that are established researchers, and uh, especially from emerging, because uh, when I really entered that program or I was given the opportunity to participate in that program, uh, uh, it was uh, just after I completed my, my PhD. And looking at where I was then and what I have acquired through that program and where I am now, where I am now uh, really implementing some of the knowledge uh, and the skills that I, I have learned from that program, I think that, that, that is that. So those are some of the programs to say that uh, organization should actually realize and acknowledge to start with. They need to acknowledge that, yes, there is uh, this um, gender gap um, related to uh, STEM-related fields. The acknowledgement is the first thing, because if you don't acknowledge that, you cannot begin to think about solutions to address that. And once you they, they identify that, acknowledge that there is a problem, it exists, it's our reality how do they close that gap? And it is things such as that, that oh yes, we see that there are, women, there are women that are getting into the system, but how do we support this woman and ensure that, I mean, the, the, the ground is somehow leveled. You give them uh, with uh, the, the acquired uh, required skills for them to also excel, whether it's imaging researchers or really uh, at, at whatever level. So uh, the other one is really um, the, the curriculum, curriculum reform. Our curriculum needs to be um, inclusive. We need to, I, I think at the back, I'm not saying that I have to get to my classroom and say, this are men, this are women, I'm going to treat it different. But we need to be aware of the, um, of the, the students that are, we are in our classroom. It should be my concern um, if uh, I see students dropping out. 
it should be a, more, a greater concern if I see female students dropping out and I do not do anything about that. And I mean the engineering discipline, we see that happen a lot. Whereby, um, uh, I mean, the, the rate that the students, female students get into the system and what we get on the other side in terms of the graduate attributes, it, it, it's not it's, it's not equal, you know. So meaning that uh, somewhere in the system we are losing students. Our students do drop out. But uh, I think the bigger problem is if we don't stop and reflect to find out why are the students dropping out. Would you say we have enough, of course, you are one of the role models and mentors that are available. Um, my question would be, are we having enough, though, to get the younger generation also motivated to penetrate the spaces? Uh, the, the issue of uh, role modeling is a serious one. Um, and it's a serious one that, one that I also believe that um, people need to be willing to do it. I speak to second year students, I say that you are in second year, once upon your time, or even last year you were a first year student. There are things or experiences that you have gone through you can actually raise your hand to mentor that uh, a student in the first year. Postgraduate student, you don't have to wait for, I don't know, leadership, wait to be head of department for me to begin to think about mentorship and lifting others as I rise. It shouldn't be like that. You are postgraduate students, you have traveled the journey. There are students that are coming in into the system, first year, second year, third year students. If each and every one of us can take it upon themselves to say that, you know what, yes, I'm in the second year, I've traveled the journey, I might not be far on my journey, but I have traveled the journey. And because I've traveled the journey, I'm raising my hand to mentor even one person that is coming after me. I think we will begin to uh, slowly solve that problem. I always say that, uh, so I, I did say that uh, one of the things that uh, that is very close to my heart is really uh, participating in community engagement uh, initiative. So I go back home. I'm from Limpopo, a small village called Asitlakwane in Limpopo. So now and then I, I, I go back home and there is a project that is very close to my heart that uh, I, I am running, which is a shoe, uh, shoe, uh, shoe, a school shoes uh, a donation project. I actually uh, uh, purchase a school shoes and I go back home. Um, uh, I'm supporting uh, four, four schools, primary schools, for, for, for many uh, families where a learner goes to school barefoot. Uh, the family cannot afford a school shoe. But sometimes, or most of the times, I actually sit and I reflect and say, but what if each and every one that has ever had the opportunity to escape that environment. They are in the university, they have the degree, uh, uh, most of them are even working. What if each and every one of us will decide to go back home? Does not have to be 100 pairs of shoes, just one learner to say that, you know what, I'm going to, look, I'm, I'm taking this one learner, I'm going to take care, even like it, it should not be resources, I'm going to mentor this one learner. So imagine if you think of it like that, at that scale, the changes that we'll really, uh, we will begin to implement in our societies, we will begin to see those changes. But that is not happening. People are, I don't know what people are waiting for. We need to understand that I don't think uh, anyone uh, is where they are because of themselves. If you can then really reflect on our own uh, journey of becoming, you'll see that, no, 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 that's actually someone that has given me the opportunity. It is really just giving back to say that, yes, I've traveled the journey a step. I don't have to be the HOD. I don't have to be this, to be this big person. But for the mere fact that I've traveled just a step higher, there is someone that is down there looking up to me. Let's go back and save. That is really that message. And anyway, if you can begin to do that, I think I, I, I can't answer that. Do we have enough? In my in my heart, deep down, I say yes. There are enough role models, but they are just not raising their hands to go back and save. And still sticking to uh, like hometown, your hometown yeah. in Limpopo. We also know that in remote areas or rural areas, we do not have enough um, career yeah. exhibitions yeah. and career yeah. advices. Yeah. So, what would be your message to a child? Who needs that advice to say STEM-related fields are the way to go? What would be a message to, to that child? 
yes, they are a way to go. And they should not believe any other voice that will t tell them otherwise. There's so many voices, uh, voices that will tell learners, uh, girl child, boy child, that they cannot do physical sciences. Uh, it was actually, I was shocked uh, sometime in July when I attended uh, one of the conferences where I heard for the first time that there are even schools in rural areas, villages where schools are closed. Subjects such as mathematics and uh, uh, physical sciences is removed from that school. And you find out that what is the reason for that? They say that, no, 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 the learners do not have the capability to comprehend mathematics and physical sciences. So really the message that I, I, I always share with the learners is that there is nothing difficult about physical sciences, there's nothing difficult about mathematics. The same mind that you use to pass what English, Zulu, Sipedi, is the same mind that you need to, uh, you, you need to use to pass uh, mathematics and, and, and physical sciences. And um, it's really a matter of focusing on what matters. You know that you are struggling in class with mathematics, you are struggling with, um, with physical sciences cut down on unnecessary time, TikToking and whatnot. <laughs> when it is well focusing on, 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 on um, things that matters. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm giving this example because I know it, it, it's something that applied to me when I was an um, uh, undergraduate student. I remember in, in one of the modules, I actually got, uh, for the first time, I got a distinction for, for a test that I wrote in one particular module. And from when I got that distinction, I made up my mind right then and there. But, but this is the same mind. So if I can get a distinction here, it means I can get distinction for all the other modules. And I did that. This is a good distinction for all the other modules that I, I, I think that year in my undergraduate, I got like an average of about 80% or more for everything. As everything, it's only two modules, so I did not get a distinction. There was a 74% and I, I can't remember. But it was like on, on the 70s. But it did not just really begin with me uh, sitting down and saying that, you know what, I'm studying hard and all that. It began with me telling myself that, no, 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 if this is the same mind that got a distinction with this one module. So that is the message to say that, look, it's, uh, it's mathematics. Look at it like you, you, you will do your, your, your what, Sipedi, Zulu, Ndebele. It is the same mind. And if you already put enough time, allocate enough time to that, you'll see that, mm, okay, things are beginning to change becomes like your mother tongue. You start to understand it better. It's like your normal day-to-day -day thing. Because I remember um, we used to be taught that the same mathematics that you have in class, your one plus one is still the same in a taxi. When you sit there at the front seat, you're still counting. So of course it gets complex, but if you apply that in your daily life, it becomes better. Well, I would also like to bring ourselves in by ourselves as the other gender, speaking to men. How can men uh, be proactive in, in, in empowering women to actually, because South Africa is for all of us, the world is for all of us. How do we make it better and brighter for everyone? Uh, thank you for, 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 for raising that. Um, I think, was it last week? I actually show, uh, saw, uh, it, that, that state was uh, shocking by UNESCO. Uh, where it is reported that 28 million boys are out of school. So I looked at that and I said, um, I mean, here we are in the world. Um, yes, we, we recognize um, this gender, uh, gender gap yeah. and really focusing on a girl child, focusing on a woman. And then when I saw that, I also have a boy child. So it's deeper. I also have a boy child, you know. Yes, really. I think I was just reflecting, and uh, I told myself that pursued to narrow the gap between, uh, I, mean, I mean, opportunities for girls and boys, women, male, in, in different uh, levels, because we are focusing so much on a girl child and abandoning a boy child. So it's important that, um, I, like, I love what you said, yes, irrespective of the gender, quality education is I mean, it's key. So many unjust things were done, which have actually made us to be where we are. And all these initiatives, all these uh, uh, projects, we are trying to, I mean, solve, uh, you know, the, the, un the unjust of the past. And I'm talking, I'm still talking about the, 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 the gender gap. But uh, so, so we don't want to also find ourselves um, developing, upskilling this woman, that they become too powerful in the boy child or a male feels that, okay, now I'm being abandoned. 
And really, I'm just reminded now, it's coming to my mind now, that so many issues uh, that uh, we are experiencing in our country, the issue of gender-based violence. And some of the stories you really look into that, you read that, um, I was listening to something during the week, whereby uh, a, 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 there's a, there's a, um, a male that killed uh, his partner, oh, no, 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 killed the kids. And when he, he actually inquired, but why did you kill my children? Like you were too powerful. So um, it, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a difficult one. Those are the dynamics that we are living in. But uh, so really my deepest desire is that while we are uh, really uh, coming up with all these initiatives, let's treat women as human beings. So uh, I, I think, yes, there are areas where I, I, I'm talking about uh, this gap that, I mean, it's 13%, and as you, you increase or you go higher, you see that that actually becoming lower and lower. You, I mean, I mean, in the South Africa, within the South African context, go and do your research and find out that who the number of women, the percentage of women that um, are really leading uh, in in uh, all these uh, GS, uh, GSA listed uh, companies. Yeah, last week we had so many. Uh, I think in the news uh, where women were, were resigning from these uh, top positions and, and and so forth. There are so many dynamics, but in us really trying to solve the problem, let us not. Um, find ourselves uh, creating another problem that in the next few years we are going to be dealing with a boy child. Now we need to start from scratch and say, okay, now we need to close that gap. So let us, let us, uh, and I think when we begin to also look at uh, uh, human beings as human beings and begin to really level that ground to say that you are a human being. Yes, you are a boy child, you are a girl child, but I'm going to give you the same opportunities. Really, my, my child, right, my child, my boy child does not deserve to <laughs> suffer from <laughs> the injustice of well, the past. <laughs> it's personal. <laughs> it's personal. It's personal, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think it is there. Let us, uh, let, let us not create another problem. Another problem. That we, we will find ourselves dealing with in the near future. Yes. And, and touching on that, um, we had a men's dialogue at organized by the UJ yeah. Community Engagement. Yeah. Um, yes, and it was also focused on towards an inclusive and diverse uh, working space in South Africa. And men came in numbers, students particularly, and we had, um, the panel was well decorated with people from SICAD and from the city of Schoburg. So men coming in and also engaging in such conversations and your concerns also arose that as men, we should be able to participate and try to have an equal society, yeah. strive towards equi equitability in South Africa. And it is quite a long journey. And I'm glad that you also caution us over doing it to an extent that we may now have another problem, yeah. trying a scale, yeah, to trying to solve a problem, but yet yeah, to creating another one. Well, I would like to also open this conversation to, um, for you maybe to include anything that you'd like to include. Yeah, most definitely. But let me just start with, there's actually a quote, uh, and I think this is also applicable to the question that you've asked. Uh, this is a quote that I have, um, is someone, something that um, our Chancellor, uh, Dr. Pumzile Mlambunga, uh, actually said uh, in her inauguration speech. This is what she said. She said, uh, gender inequality is the responsibility of men to address because perpetrators of discrimination against women is perpetrated perpetrated by men, close quote. So that is, that is deep um, because it seems as if um, sometimes men just want to be observers. Um, and, and I know because uh, really personally as a woman, you tend to be, uh, I know that because of, of my own uh, struggles and being aware of what is happening, I tend to be leaning towards assisting a woman. When, when, when I see a, 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 a female student, a, a female colleague, I tend to be, I think naturally, I, 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 I want to, to do that. So I, I think it was really, I just wanted to leave that. I don't want to say much about it, but it is that, that really men needs to be in, in, in this conversation because I, I think they are unjust in terms of this, uh, the gender that we are talking about. These are the things that were done by, by men if you look at uh, really study the history and, and so forth. But um, I, I think in closing, uh, I'll say that a uh, few things. First is that uh, I think as, as women, when women show up, 
I, I wear so many, so many hats. I show up in so many uh, platforms, different platforms. They and uh, when we show up that way, there are always people behind the scene, uh, whether they are sac sacrificing for us to shine and all that. So just really um, being grateful for 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 those people and uh, my husband being one. Uh, truly grateful for the women and men. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not self-made. There are women and men that are carrying me carrying me physically, carrying me and in their spirit, uh, you know. So I'm just really grateful for those to say that um, I, I, I appreciate everything that they do for me. They are men and women. I mean, my journey uh, is really, uh, is not, uh, I have men that uh, sp sponsor me, men that speak on my behalf in rooms and spaces that I cannot enter. So uh, what I'm talking about is that uh, the conversation needs to be um, uh, be led by men. The conversation, men needs to be actually be the ones that are pioneering this. Personally, I have experienced it. And I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful for that, for those that are really enter in, in, in rooms where decisions are made. And they say that, who oh, but do, have you seen Uteboho? Consider Uteboho. And those are really men and women that are, I'm, I'm standing on their shoulders. Truly grateful for that. Um, and uh, also, I think very important that when you are called uh, to uh, for this for this responsibility responsibility to lead, you cannot lead without a support without support. And for me personally, um, yeah, I just want to be, say that I'm grateful for my colleagues in the Department of Chemical Engineering here at UJ for all the support that they continue to give unto me. And really, we need to. Um, lift as you rise. Uh, it has to be our, our responsibility. You do not need a position. You do not need a title to, to lift others. You do not need a title to, to mentor someone else. The fact that you have traveled a journey, a step ahead of someone that is coming before you, it means that you are capable. Go back and uh, give that helping hand. Yeah. Oh, powerful words. I believe it still remains lift as you rise. If you haven't gotten that, you didn't get most of this interview. Well, Prof. Debuchel, we really appreciate you for joining us today. Thank you. It was uh, really, truly an honor to be here, and I'm really grateful. Yeah. Well, there you have it, dear viewers. The main motto has been lift as you rise. And that was my conversation with Prof. Debuho Mashifana. See you on the next episode. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.